Hello, my front porch friend. Oh, for me, it has been a busy day today. Just one of those days that is just all work and no play. So you found me in the kitchen tonight cooking dinner because in order for me to get this word that I have to share with you out to you on time, you're just gonna have to come in the kitchen and cook dinner with me. But we can make this work if you'll just work with me, all right? First of all, I'll show you what we're eating for dinner. I wish you was here with me and we'd eat it together if you like this. It's one of my favorite meals. I got some collards cooking, and you know, these are fresh collards from, I mean, that a friend of mine gave my mama tonight, and gotta have bacon and collards. And as my mother says, a little sugar. In fact, mama put sugar, a little sugar, in just about everything, but especially collards. And we've got us some black-eyed peas. Well, actually, it's not exactly black-eyed peas. It sort of is. It's called field peas with snaps. <clears throat> Gotta have a little bacon in those, too. I know, I know. I eat healthy other times. But tonight, you, this food, you just need bacon. But this is healthy. Let me get my pot holder out. <clears throat> got some sweet potatoes. You need sweet potatoes if you're going to eat collards. So we got some sweet potatoes and <clears throat> I'm making some, do y'all do corn, do y'all ever do cornbread when it's just like you make it with pancake, like a, like a pancake, you know, I don't have time to put it in the oven tonight. I'm out of time, but you just go ahead and make up your, your batter. I'm adding, adding some onion in it tonight and you got to have buttermilk, right? Anyway, fix it up some cornbread pancake patties and it'll be good. But I've got to talk to you. This word for you has been on my spirit all day long. And uh, I was looking forward to talking with you about it because I so enjoyed reading over your comments over the last few days from last week. You know, last week we heard the Lord say to us that sweet question this time of the year, whenever he said, what do you want for Christmas? And I was just so blessed to read your comments. I was, you know something I enjoyed? I enjoyed reading where some of you were saying that you weren't even gonna decorate for Christmas this year. And then after you heard this word from the Lord, you decided you're just gonna put up the Christmas tree and just do it for you and Jesus. Every time I read one of you, one of those comments that said that, I just had to smile. You know, and you can't feel too much if you don't have a lot of Christmas decorations. Now, I did decorate in the mill house, which I showed you some of that last week. But inside my house house, here's my Christmas decorations for inside my house. You want to see it? This is it right there. And it's got a little light in the back of it that you can turn on. And uh, let me show you. But anyway, that's my Christmas decorations for the inside of the house right there. <laughs> I'm just going to set it there, but that's the best I could do. You know what, though? Isn't that what Christmas is all about anyway? As simple as it is, it's still the story of Jesus. And whenever last week we heard that sweet word that was just as simple as it was from the Lord, what do you want for Christmas? I was so blessed by reading your comments to the Lord. They weren't to me, they were to him, which is the way it's supposed to be. And you asking and, and just believing the Lord, even just like a little girl and a few men, presenting to the Lord your request and answering his question. And then I loved it where some of you were asking him back, Lord, what do you want for Christmas? Because it certainly goes both ways. And like I told you last week, and I'll tell you again, he's not some Santa Claus in the sky. <laughs> Far from. He is a holy and wonderful father who just loves giving good gifts to his children. And, and I was blessed because, it's, like I said, many of you uh, were asking for things that are in the natural impossible to receive. I mean, many of you were asking for things that money cannot buy. That's what I was hoping you would do. That's what he loves to give. Many of you were asking for things that uh, you know, that are not tangible. It's 
things, gifts like changed hearts. You're asking for gifts like healing or deliverance. Some of you are asking for tangible things and that's okay too. I read where many of you were asking for a house that would really supply and meet the needs of your family and, and financial needs that you have. And the Father wants to meet those needs. But today, as I was pondering this word for you tonight and really listening, Lord, what are you wanting to say to my front porch friends tonight? I heard this word as almost like he was wanting us to follow up on what he said to us last week. And this is what I heard. I was to share with you, now that you have asked, now that he is asking you have answered of what you want for Christmas, is how do you receive a gift from God? I mean, it's not like on September 25th, he's going to open the door, uh, you know, with presents in hand or send them down a chimney. It's not that way with him. How, how do you receive a gift from God. Well, let's talk about that. I'm going to tell you two things that came into my spirit for you today. And we talk about these a lot, actually in a different form, but let's be reminded of some scriptures that we need to hear. First of all, how do you receive a gift from God? How do you know you're going to, to receive? Is number one, you ask according to his will. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. Every request I was able to read over the last few days, I read these requests that were according to the will of God. You know, that's why, remember, we talk about it, 1 John 5, 14, you should memorize it as I have, where it says, and this is our confidence, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know we have whatever we ask. Now, just just to be clear, most of the things that you have asked for, we know are according to his will because many of you are asking for the salvation of your children, the salvation of your husband, salvation of family members and friends. And that's why, you know, in uh, 2 Peter, the third chapter, it says, God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. So we know we're asking according to his will whenever we are asking for the salvation of loved ones. God made it clear. I don't want anybody to perish. We know that many of you are believing for healing in your body, and that's what you're asking for for Christmas. Well, then we know that is his will, because in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse, I believe it's five, he says that by his stripes, by the stripes he took on his body, we, our bodies, were healed. So we know that not only is that his will, he paid the price for us to have that gift. For those of you that are believing for financial things and financial needs to be met in your life. We know that we can ask for that. And it's according to his will because in Philippians, the fourth chapter, it says that our God supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I love praying those kind of prayers because it is clear to me that I have his will on it. That means I have his word on it. That means I can ask whatever I will because I know it's in his will. And I know that when I ask like that, he is hearing me. When you're praying for your prodigal daughter, you're praying for your prodigal son or husband or loved one, you can know he is hearing you. And then it says, and we know that we will have whatever we ask for. So Karen, you say that with confidence. That's right, because that's what he says. This is our confidence. I am confident of that. Now, you know, I'm a, here's the deal, ladies. When you're praying foolish prayers that we know are not in his will, don't waste your time. If you're, you know, if you're over here praying for the Lord to give you somebody else's husband, ain't going to happen. He ain't going to change his mind on that. He's, he doesn't answer. He doesn't receive request that he's already made his word clear on that is not his will. So don't pray for things that, that you know, are, are foolishness that God has made already clear. But listen, his word is, it's, it's just like the, an open door of opportunity for the asking of the things that really matter. So what you don't know how to pray for, you just pray in the spirit. Or you say, Lord, let your will be done. And he hears that. Now, here's the next thing. If we pray according to his will, we receive it. Next thing, okay, I've done that, Karen. Now what? Second thing is to believe. You've asked and then you believe. That's what he says. He says you could ask whatever you will. And if you'll believe and not doubt in your heart, you will have whatever you ask for. That's what Jesus said. How do I believe? You, you 
Here's, here's the beautiful word he gave me for you today. You believe by once you have asked for that thing, you ask for God's word about that thing. Ask for his will. Ask his word and his will is the same thing. Lord, reveal to me your word about this situation. And then you pray that word over it. And you take that word and you receive it in yourself. You receive it like a spoken word, like, like you're just eating the word. You meditate on that word until you believe that word. You, re, you ask for the word, you receive the word, and you believe it. Beautiful illustration of that is in the first chapter of Luke, which is the story of Christmas. Our sweet Mary, the mother of Jesus, she set the example for us in this, in a beautiful way. Please listen to this. This is the word I heard for somebody watching tonight. The angel comes to Mary in the first chapter of Luke, and I'll just scan it for time's sake. It says here that the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, and he says, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think about what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her. You have found favor with God. Oh, I feel right now to look at this screen and tell somebody watching right now, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. He has heard your prayer. He has heard your request. He has seen it. He saw your comment last week that was a faith statement to him. And I hear this for somebody right now. My mother said this to me today, and it's true. Sometimes the enemy tries to make us think we don't have faith. That there's not, you know, he tries to make us think you're not going to get anything from God because your faith is too weak. You don't even have any faith. Well, you know what is the truth? The fourth thing, that's a lie. You do have faith. You know, one reason I know you have faith is just the fact, number one, that you're still watching this right now tells me you have faith. Number two, just the fact that last week and this week, you're going to do it again. Last week, you commented. You made your request known unto God. You, you laid before him your desire. The very fact that you did that tells me you have faith. So do not let the devil tell you your prayers don't matter because you don't have faith. Yes, you do have faith. And the Bible says that God has given to every man the measure of faith. So you let the devil know that's a lie, devil. I've been given a measure of faith and it's faith for me just to ask God and I'm asking him in faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the angel says to Mary, Mary, you found favor with God. Then he says this, look. He says, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call his name Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. He will give, God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. And then he says this, well, Mary says this to the angel. She says, but how can these things be? Because I've never known a man. She says, I'm a virgin. How can it happen? And the angel replied. Now there's Mary's question. How can it happen? I'm a virgin. Here's his answer. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That's how it's going to happen, Mary. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Now that's not a whole lot of clarity about this thing. It's just as simple as that. Okay? I'm going to bear the Son of God. I've never known a man. How can it happen? Her answer, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you, Mary. And the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. Now, look at this. Skip down to verse 38. And here's Mary's response back when the angel tells her that. She says, I am the Lord's servant. Be it done unto me according to your will. Oh, do you know what just happened? Mary heard a word and she received that word and she believed that word. I'm gonna show you something else what that happened. The Bible says that she, a few days later, she went to see her cousin Elizabeth who was also pregnant in a miraculous way. 
because the angel had told Mary about her Elizabeth, about her cousin being pregnant. And he says, he says, I know it's impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Oh, can I tell somebody watching right now? With God, nothing is impossible. I know the request you put down last week was impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. That's right. The marriage is not impossible. Your son's return is not impossible. Your daughter's deliverance is not impossible. It is totally possible with God. Now watch. So Mary walks in the house with her cousin Elizabeth, who's carrying John the Baptist in her womb. And she sees Mary, her cousin, the mother of her Savior. And Elizabeth says to Mary, oh, she says, my baby just leapt in my womb at just the sight of you. And then Elizabeth says this to Mary. Oh, this is so beautiful. In chapter 1 of Luke, in verse 45 in the New Living, he, Elizabeth says, you are blessed, Mary, watch, because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Another version says this, blessed is she who has believed there would be a fulfillment of, of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Oh, my friend watching tonight, that's what faith is for you. For Mary, Elizabeth looks at her, and she recognizes that faith. What are you talking about, Elizabeth? What word did Mary believe? Mary, Elizabeth says, Mary, you're blessed because you believed that God was going to do what he said. What had he said? He had told Mary, you're going to bear a son. It's impossible. You're a virgin. How? How can it be? How can it be? And then the answer, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And then Mary just says, be it done to me according to your will. When Mary said that, oh, I believe, this is my personal opinion, I believe when Mary responded with that answer, be it done unto me according to your will, that at that moment, the Holy Spirit that he just spoke of overshadowed her and she became pregnant with the Son of God. How did that happen? How was Mary impregnated by God? It's, it's just almost unthinkable. How can this happen? Because Mary received the word of God. Mary received the seed of God. Jesus says in the book of Matthew that the word is the seed. The word of God is a seed. And so when Mary, that's how any baby is born. The baby is born through the seed of the father. Because of the seed of the father. When Mary received the word that the angel brought her. Mary received the seed of God by saying, be it done unto me according to your will. And when she said that, the Holy Spirit came upon her and impregnated her with the word of God. And that's what Jesus is. The Bible says that he was and is the word of God. And the word was made flesh. Oh, hallelujah. The word, the word that Mary believed, the word that she received, the word of God. She believed it and she received it. And when she did, she received the seed of God in her womb, the word of God. And the word that she believed became flesh and dwelt among us and became the savior of the world. Oh, impossible things happen when we believe the word. Honey, I'm just gonna be like the old lady Elizabeth who looks at you, my friend, and I wanna declare over you you are blessed tonight because you are believing the word that God has spoken to you. And here's what the Lord told me to read to you tonight. He told me to read to you out of Hebrews, the 10th chapter and the 23rd verse, and also verses 35 and 37. This is out of the New Living Translation. The Lord said to tell you this, concerning your request last week. Hold tightly without wavering 
to the hope that you have affirmed. For God can be trusted. For God can be trusted. Did you get that, honey? Hold fast without wavering to the hope that you declared last week when you wrote that request before God of what you're believing for for Christmas. Hold fast to that hope and don't waver. Why? Because God can be trusted. I know people sometimes can't be trusted. And I know you and I both have been hurt by people that broke our trust. But God is not a man that he should lie. And God says, because God can be trusted. Verse 35 says, so do not throw away this confident trust. Don't you throw away your trust. Don't you throw away your hope. Remember the great reward it brings you. Now watch this. Patient endurance is what you need right now. I'm going to just go look this straight up right now out of my Bible because it's so good. I'm going to have you just look at it with me. I'm going to hold it down so you can look at it. Look at this. Can you see that word right there? Patient endurance is what you need right now so that you will continue to do God's will and you will receive all that he promised. Did you get that? You are going to receive all that he promised. How? Because of your patient endurance. You're going to hold fast to your confidence. You're going to hold fast to your trust in God. You're going to be patient in your endurance and then you're going to receive everything that he has promised you. And then look at this next verse in Hebrews again, 10, 37, for in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. I love the name of God right there, the coming one. Look at that. See that right there? For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. Oh, that's another name for God for us. He's the coming one. Yes, he's going to come again the second coming. I know that any day. Hallelujah. But also, he's coming in your circumstance. Your help is on the way. He's coming, honey. He is coming. He saw your request last week. He is coming. Your coming one will come, and he will not be delayed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When he comes, honey, it's going to feel like I suddenly has hit your house. Now, last thing, and we're going to pray, and we're going to go. I, I felt to tell you, just like Mary, when Mary received the word and was impregnated by the seed of God, the word of God is what impregnated her. She received it when she believed it. She received it when she said, be it done to me according to your word. You tonight have received the seed of God and the word of God in your spirit. And you're, it's almost as though you are pregnant in the spirit with something that God has put inside of you. Maybe it's the faith that you have for your family. You are carrying that expectancy. Yeah, honey, you are expecting. I'm expecting. You expecting? I'm expecting a miracle. I'm expecting for some things right now in my own family. I'm expecting. If anybody just needs to know, I'm expecting. Yep. And I'm carrying it in the womb of my spirit. Hallelujah. I'm expecting any day. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know when it's going to be delivered, but it's coming. And the Lord told me to read this to you, this last thing. My friend, she is a friend to me, Lana Bowser. She's from Australia, and she releases these words that she hears. And today, she released this word. I'm just going to read you a paragraph from it. It was so good. But when I read it, I knew that it was actually to you. Listen to this. Isaiah 66, 9. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery, saith the Lord? Shall I, who cause delivery, shut up the womb, saith God? Then here's her word. Daughters of God, the time has come for you to see the God who delivers, bring forth delivery in a way you have never seen before. The mighty, powerful hand of God is going to bring forth that which he has spoken to you. He is going to deliver it. He is going to sustain it. He is going to watch over it. And he is going to cause it to flourish. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, strengthen my friend tonight in faith. 
Lord, is, is he or is even she or even he is carrying this thing, this, this thing, this holy thing in the womb of their spirit. I pray that tonight, God, your word is so established in them. They are not wavering on what you have promised. They are standing firm firm in believing that we have asked you according to your will and you have heard us and we know that when we ask according to your will you hear us and we receive those things that we have asked father in jesus name we have lifted up these requests before you god we have asked according to your will for loved ones to be saved bodies to be healed provision to be made houses to be provided we have asked you for deliverance and salvation and joy to come, even deliverance and salvation, even for the people of this nation tonight, God. Lord, what looks impossible, we know that with God, all things are possible. Lord, like Mary, we stand on your word. Like Mary, we receive your word. And like Mary, we believe your word in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, thank you that you can be trusted. Thank you that you are not a man that you would lie. We believe you, Father, and we stand together. My front porch friend and I, we stand in faith, believing prodigals are coming home. We are believing tonight for miracles of healing. We are believing tonight for marriages restored. We are believing you tonight, God, for a way made where there seems to be no way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, my friend, comment below and let me hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to know what you're still standing for. I don't care if every week you've sent the same thing. Keep sending it. And we stand in agreement with each other, don't we? Amen. All right. <sighs> I got to get back to cooking my cornbread and get it on the stove. And my dinner is going to be a late one tonight. But I love you. And I'm standing in firm agreement with you tonight. In Jesus' name. I'll talk to you next week for a special Christmas word. All right? Until then, keep standing. Bye-bye.